Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everybody, uh, we, we have started uh, discussing on Kalman filter for last couple of lectures. We actually uh, given some overview and then followed up with some uh, basic concepts of uh, random variables followed by Kalman filter derivation in continuous time linear, continuous time linear time invariant system that part that platform actually. So, we will develop further and our uh, motivation is to go towards uh, external Kalman filter and if possible uh, uncentered Kalman filter as well. That is what people use these days uh, very heavily and that is what we develop towards that. So, this particular uh, this particular lecture will uh, again have a very quick overview of uh, what we discussed in the last class followed by will uh, the discrete time domain the derivation actually and then uh, we will uh, continue further on, on those lines actually but ultimately the idea will be to merge discrete time and continuous time together. All right, so let us get started a very quick overview of uh, Kalman filter design for linear time invariant system and as again continuous time domain of whatever we have discussed in the last uh, lecture. So, the system dynamics was something I mean we consider here is something like this x dot is x plus v u plus z w y is c x plus v w and v are continuous time uh, process and uh, sensor noises respectively. I also had some assumptions that initial conditions uh, uh, are described as something like a mean value and associated covariance matrix and followed by all these uh, assumptions that uh, W and V are uncorrelated white noise and then um, they are also mutually orthogonal all these X naught W and V are mutually orthogonal things like that. And, uh, and using this relationship somewhere down the line we are able to derive this uh, continuous time Kalman filter. So, so, how did you do that something like this the objective was to estimate this x of uh, x hat of t using the system dynamics as well as as well as a sequence of measurements as accurately as possible that was our aim. That means, the error of estimation x minus x hat t should, should become very small or ideally it should go to 0 as t tends to infinity. So, that was our uh, our objective actually. So, how did you do that uh, we had a estimator dynamics uh, which is uh, which we took it in this form x i dot is a x i plus v u plus k e times y minus y hat and where x i was defined as expected value of x uh, and then y hat uh, I mean it turns out that it is nothing but c x i because e v is 0 I mean expected value of e is 0. So, the whole point is how do we design this Kalman gain k e but then uh, we had some derivations like this. So, first we told okay, we will define something like a process uh, I mean sorry this uh, p of t which is nothing but error covariance matrix. Uh, so, this is this was defined like that and we wanted to have study a dynamics of that I mean how it evolves where it goes and things like that actually. So, we had this p dot derivation which is nothing but expected value of all that because expected value and derivative and derivatives are uh, both uh, linear operators they commute. So, the derivative goes inside and it follows like this and it turns out that uh, this p dot can be expressed as something like this plus uh, this entire same thing whole transpose. So, then uh, then we thought okay, what is this this quantity ok. So, that quantity is uh, I mean for, for knowing that uh, we know this uh, there is a term called x tilde dot. So, for for knowing x tilde dot we uh, we have to go back to the x tilde definition and then from this definition this x tilde dot comes out uh, naturally. So, you have x tilde dot is x dot minus x hat dot which is the put back the dynamics ok and x hat dot is the observer dynamics. So, put it back and then try to simplify further it turns out that this is uh, something that what we define is a minus k e c is uh, I mean a naught x tilde plus these additional quantities g w minus k e v. So, obviously, the, the error dynamics uh, gets uh, gets affected by both process noise as well as uh, sensor noise basically. Then ok this term is ready now, but what our aim was not that our aim is to get some get some value something like this. So, then we told ok what is this one uh, this one we expected value of that 
and then we try to expand the algebra inside and then uh, invoke this uh, this idea that expected value is a linear operator. So, we can separate it out and then it turns out that uh, this quantity by definition is nothing but p. Okay. However, these quantities we need to still evaluate the okay, expected value of this in this case we still need to evaluate actually. So, where are you heading to? I mean this uh, this quantities okay, for knowing this we need to have a solution of x tilde dot actually okay, but what we have got so far is x tilde dot dot. So, we need to get a solution for that, but then you can think that okay, this x tilde dot dot equation what you have here is something like a homogeneous part and the time in time varying input. So, if this is this is like that we know the solution and the solution is uh, coming from linear time invariant systems theory directly. Well, okay, this this uh, solution can be represented something like an exponential term with a initial condition plus the, this integral term this convolution integral sort of thing with 0 to t e to the power n r t minus tau all this actually. This is nothing but uh, the entire thing is nothing but a time varying input actually. Okay. So, then again linear op uh, integration is a linear operator. So, we can separate it out and then we can evaluate because uh, I mean this is the solution of x tilde t, but this is what is our aim? Our aim is to evaluate uh, this this quantities actually. So, we go back and, and substitute the term for that quantity okay, r of w x tilde. So, this is nothing but by definition is nothing but expected value of w and x tilde transpose. Now, we have got a expression for x tilde I think. So, we put it back there. Okay. And it turns out that uh, because of mutual orthogonality relationships and all, everything else will go. The v and x tilde dot will go with as long as it is multiplied with w actually. So only term that will remain is is w term itself. And again, you can excite this this linear operator uh, concept, and it puts this w inside. And then here it turns out that the w times w transpose appears. Okay, and this again this expected value will go inside the integral. And the expected value of this thing, okay, by definition, we started. Uh, I mean, this this definition, the expected value of W W transpose is nothing but Q. Right? So because of that, uh, it turns out uh, that uh, this is nothing but a delta operator will come in here. And we also, I mean, there was a small tethering uh, there last time. But anyway, this uh, this turns out that if you have a delta operator uh, sitting here, something like integral a to b f of t and uh, multiplied by a delta operator with its uh, well, let's say t minus tau, okay, d d t sort of thing, or t minus uh, let's say c, okay, sorry, uh, all right, let's say t minus c into d t. Okay. This turns out that okay, if it is uh, if c lies uh, completely inside the interval of a and b then it is nothing but uh, f of c and if it is uh, somewhere uh, uh, either a or b then it is uh, something like uh, half of uh, f of uh, a or half of uh, f of b. Okay. So, this is uh, this, this one is provided t is completely uh, inside a b this is uh, this is if uh, uh, sorry if, if c sorry one second if uh, if c is completely inside a b and if it, this one is if c is equal to uh, a okay, what happened there? okay. Okay, so this is actually c is equal to a, and this one if c is equal to b. Okay, so that means uh, as long as c is completely inside the interval of uh, this integral, uh, so that takes the form of uh, uh, just a, I mean f of c. But if it is somewhere on the boundary, then half term will come into picture. Because of that, uh, I mean this this interval, what this integral, what you see, there is a half term here. Okay, but uh, but tau is getting evaluated at t because t happens to be one of the I mean the limits of the integral. So then, uh, okay, this this is nothing but uh, get. I mean now it is e to the power zero because t equal to tau. Then e to the power zero is nothing but identity, and hence you get something like this. So we got now a, a kind of a deterministic quantity for this uh, this term, cross covariance matrix sort of thing. 
and then for about this quantity we can exactly follow the similar line uh, but uh, instead of uh, this I mean only retaining this now it will be only this quantity with a negative sign of course. So, this uh, this algebra follows exactly similar to that again you will have a delta function there and it turns out that something like uh, minus uh, r into k e transpose. So, then we told okay the now we are ready now uh, to put everything into place. Uh, so, our our motivation was to evaluate this first. So, this term was already there. Now, about these two terms we got something like r w x tilde is something like this and r v x tilde is something like this. So, now this expression turns out to be something like that. So, going back tell okay our p dot was something like uh, this term plus the same term transpose. So, hence p dot is nothing but same term plus same term transpose I mean this term plus uh, plus this exact same term transpose. So, you do the algebra right and then combine these terms it turns out to be something like that. Now, here is a problem where it uh, tell okay uh, we still need to design k e, but we need a solution for p also for that actually ok. So, here we, we have to go back and excite a theorem sort of thing it tells ok uh, on steady state this p dot is going to go to 0 provided this quantity a naught which is a minus k e c stable actually ok. So, and we are what we are interested in is a positive semi definite solution for p of t. So, this is uh, this turns out to be like this ok. So, essentially what it means is uh, uh, because p of t is something by I mean p of t is something like this, what it also means is the smaller the p the better actually better the estimate. So, essentially uh, what you are telling here is we want to minimize p subject to this uh, this uh, constraint equation. So, we have to formulate a some sort of optimization problem where uh, we want to minimize j is half of that subject to this constraint ok. But this is a matrix equation constraint ok and this is a matrix norm stress, no, stress is also kind of a norm actually. All right. So, then what you what you told is ok uh, the formulation as the solution turns out to be something like that you formulate an augmented cost function and then take all these partial derivatives with respect to p k e as well as this this Lagrange multiplier matrix S basically. So, constraint all these three constraints equation is to be uh, satisfied together and hence uh, if you solve it one by one it turns out that k e is nothing but p c transpose r inverse actually. So, that you got an expression for k e. Now, how about uh, p? p? P can be obtained as a solution of this ok because all the, the what you are doing here is getting this uh, three equations satisfied together basically. So, it turns out uh, that this this equation must be satisfied ok after putting all this expression for k e and hence it uh, I mean this is nothing but uh, what is called as filter Ricard equation actually. So, essentially we need to solve this equation and then evaluate this uh, this Kalman gain like this and then put it back in the observer equation that we know actually. So, that was the whole development in the in the framework of uh, continuous time LTI ok, but uh, it turns out that uh, uh, certain I mean the uh, invariably we have assumed one uh, one small thing here which uh, which has a big implication that uh, the measurement equations uh, we also assumed that they are continuous time and unfortunately the continuous time measurements are typically not feasible. So, next people thought ok how about going into discrete time actually because uh, if you have a continuous time system dynamic equation we can always discretize it in using some uh, some discretized uh, numerical equation I mean numerical integration formula and things like that. So, that will give us a platform for discrete time system dynamics whereas, the continuous the, the discrete time uh, uh, sensor measurements uh, are still available with us actually directly. So, that that makes it the platform some sort of a compatible actually. So, then uh, that is the whole idea that uh, we wanted to see Kalman filter design for for linear time I mean it is a discrete time thing, but before that okay, there is one more assumption that we uh, I mean we had it here in the entire beginning if I go back. We also told that this is nothing but the linear time invariant system that means A, B and uh, I mean C all that what you see these are all not varying with time actually. Now, what if they are time varying things actually ok. So, that is the natural generalization before you go to discrete time domain all right. So, then let us see that ok this development is very parallel to what we what we had done uh, for uh, I mean continuous time LTI system. So, let us see uh, what is the derivation for that. So, the problem definition is uh, almost same what we have seen before. 
the only difference is all the system dynamic matrices a b z c and all that they are all now time varying matrices okay so they they take different values at different point of time actually so they now what actually all right so, so the objective remains exactly same again we want to have some sort of an estimate uh, for which the error should go to zero as t goes to infinity so we again had the same uh, filter dynamics okay and then we have this uh, this error definition x tilde something like this then we have this uh, error dynamics we exactly derive similar way the only thing that we need to keep in mind is that uh, the all the matrices that we are talking now is is time varying okay so then uh, it uh, we end up with the same error dynamics uh, but the the difference here is okay this time this term uh, is actually time varying okay so we cannot excite the solution in the form of exponential actually okay however we know that even even if there is a time varying system dynamics but still it is linear system then uh, we can have solutions of this form where phi comes into picture okay and this uh, phi turns out to be something like state transition matrix okay. so using this state transition matrix concept we can still write the solution okay something like this okay and then we go back to the the error covariance matrix definition p of t is nothing more than okay. so exactly is proceeding the the very similar manner and that's one of the reasons why i wanted to review that uh, last lecture material so we again go back to the definition of uh, what is p and then p dot is nothing but expected value of derivative all that this derivative this derivative times that plus uh, plus this times that derivative also the things you can uh, derive everything and then turns out to be something like this okay okay now what you can say is uh, we cannot ex excite the thing that on steady state things will go to zero that that's not possible okay because it is all uh, happening in a time varying sense okay it uh, depends again the, the the way this matrices vary and things like that so we cannot excite this condition of uh, asymptotic stability and things like that when t goes to infinity we cannot claim that p of t should go to zero that may not happen here so if that doesn't happen then uh, the the next best thing that probably comes to mind is how can we do something so that the rate of change will will be minimum actually that means p dot will turn out to be minimum okay so then uh, we want to minimize p dot and hence we we see what is the stress of p dot actually okay so stress uh, it turns out to be something like this okay and uh, since stress of uh, this quantity is also stress of the same quantity transpose or same quantity transpose turns out to be something like this okay the transpose will take a reverse sequence so it will be ke transpose whole transpose again ke c transpose whole transpose is c and then p transpose coming here and remember p is a symmetric matrix so p transpose is p so that turns out to be like this actually so this fact has been utilized somewhere here actually now the problem turns out to be like uh, uh, we don't want to minimize p per se what we want to minimize uh, p dot so minimize this quantity okay j is half of trace of p dot actually okay. and minimize with respect to what we minimize with respect to ke basically okay. so then the necessary condition is del j by del ke has to be equal to zero and del j by del ke if you do this uh, operator then it turns out that p dot is uh, this expression okay because these two quantities uh, i mean p p dot okay trace of p dot is this quantity okay and trace of p dot happens to be i mean this p dot happens to be this minus that if you substitute back your this uh, this expression okay sorry this uh, this trace of p dot if you if you simplify the algebra and things like that it will turn out to be something like this quantity basically okay so this uh, this quantity if i have this minimum uh, min derivative with respect to ke then i i can take take it inside tell okay this this expression is nothing but this expression now and this expression i p has to be equal to zero that means if i solve for ke ke takes the form of okay so i mean this remember ke times r is equal to p times c transpose so r is in the right hand side so you have to take right in right hand side inverse only we don't have a choice of left side so ke turns out to be 
something like uh, P C transpose R inverse again exactly the same expression what you have seen before, but uh, all these are time varying now basically. Okay. Now, uh, that P dot when you what you are talking what uh, okay, there is a P term where P comes from the solution of this P dot equation okay, with initial condition that we that we know basically P dot is uh, nothing but P of in P of 0 is nothing but expected value of this this quantity. Well, this is actually available with us in some guess form and all that. But anyway, so that is uh, I mean uh, P naught is available, so P dot is available. So, so that uh, utilizing that, we should be able to get a solution for P of t actually. Okay. So that is the that's the approach. The expression remains same, but P cannot talk about a steady state Ricard equation solution, but it, is, it should be a solution of this differential equation with this initial condition actually. Now, what happens to the time invariant steady state case uh, that is a special case sort of thing. Uh, there if it is time invariant P dot has to go to 0 and if P dot has to go to 0 this expression remains same, but uh, this expression turns out to be nothing but the same algebraic Ricard equation for filter design. Okay. So, the essentially what it means the solution is same as what you have derived before actually. Okay. So, the only difference is the Ricard equation needs to be solved from this initial condition and this differential equation that is that is the bottom line actually. So, summary sense uh, we have to have a I mean we should initialize this uh, this state x at uh, 0 and then we should uh, propagate P of t from filter Ricard equation uh, with this initial condition compute the Kalman gain and then propagate this filter dynamics ok. So, that is uh, as simple as that actually. All right, so everything good, but there are there are other practical difficulties uh, and things like that, which I encourage all of you to read some textbooks and all that. For mainly coming from from numerical things as well as the difficulty of uh, for guessing some good initial conditions and things like that. But as long as it is linear system dynamics and all, uh, it should not be too much of a concern. Eventually, everything will uh, will converge. Actually, that's not a problem at all. Okay. All right, we'll continue further. And then tell okay, what about this uh, this uh, filter stability issue basically? Because everything is changing in time, I don't know what will happen and things like that. So then uh, we'll define this x tilde for algebra simplicity. We introduce this uh, new notation x tilde is expected value of x, uh, x tilde, and then x tilde is uh, I mean this expected value of uh, x tilde dot. And we have de derived this before that uh, this dy dt of this quantity turns out to be something like this actually. Okay. So, this is available with us and this expression we know basically. Okay. So, then we tell okay, we will uh, we'll select a Lyapunov function okay, which is nothing but uh, this kind of this form and again remember Lyapunov function can be chosen anything as long as they satisfy certain properties like first to definite uh, ness and all that. So, the, this is a positive definite function because P is positive definite, P inverse is also positive definite. So, we can select it that way. Okay. So, what we also know that uh, in the derivative, so the Lyapunov theory will tell uh, you analyze, I mean, select a um, positive definite V and then with respect to that selection, V dot has to be negative definite, something like that. So, when you take V dot, Remember, P inverse is also a time varying quantity. That means we will also need a derivative for P inverse actually, dy dt of P inverse. Okay, so that is why it will okay. The exciting this quantity P times P inverse is identity. We take derivative of both sides. Okay, and this derivative because identity is constant matrix, this turns out to be zero. So when you solve for this, then if you solve for this quantity, then it turns out that is this is the expression actually for P dot inverse. So, we go back to V and then tell what is V dot now. So, V dot turns out to be all these three expressions first term with the rest of the terms I mean x e dead dot transpose then this quantity then this two quantity times x e dot and then middle quantity dot actually p inverse dot. Now, p inverse dot is available. So, this is our p inverse dot and this x e tilde dot is available that is what it is. And x tilde dot transpose is transpose of the entire thing, which is a reverse transpose sort of thing. So we see the x tilde uh, transpose coming first, and other things coming later. Actually, so we put it back here. Okay, 
and now you can expand this uh, this brackets and then excite this uh, this fact that k is nothing but p c transpose r inverse actually and also we know that uh, that p dot is in this form so if you if you expand all that put this p dot expression expand and do this uh, this necessary algebra it will turn out that v dot is nothing but this expression actually okay. so clearly if, if q is positive semi definite and r is positive definite okay remember q is positive semi definite at least here so this quantity this is a symmetric term again and p is again positive definite term okay so this term this term remains positive semi definite whereas this term because r is positive definite r inverse is also positive definite and this is also a symmetric term c transpose is sort of thing so this turns out to be positive definite actually okay so this means if if this selection is met q is positive semi definite and r is positive definite then v dot is guaranteed to be negative definite okay so stability condition is met but uh, that this is local asymptotic stability but it also turn out turns out that the the way we selected v is also radially unbounded actually okay and it also is shown that it is not it is actually a decrescent function basically okay these are all concepts from from nonlinear control theory basically those, those of you are interested can see some some books on that or you can see my other course where it talked a little bit on uh that uh, on the lepno theory there are some couple of lectures there uh, and you can see some of those lectures to see some of these concepts actually okay. so the condition turns out that if v dot is negative definite and on top of that if uh, v is radially unbounded and it is also decrescent then it is actually uh, it satisfies this this global stability behavior and hence we can claim that uh, this particular x tilde t that dynamics is globally uniformly asymptotically stable basically okay so this is a very strong notation a sort of thing strong uh, result basically okay. so it is uh, asymptotically stable and it is uh, it is uniformly asymptotically stable that means uh, it doesn't matter when you start the material of t not actually and it is also this result is uh, globally true so that's what you are telling globally uniformly asymptotically stable all right so this is uh, this gives us a um, uh, kind of uh, lot of confidence that nothing will go bad the way if we implement this way even if you start with some arbitrary p not it may take a little more time to converge but eventually it will it will converge actually okay there will nothing nothing will go bad really so that's a generalization of carnot uh, filter in continuous time from from linear time invariant systems to time varying system but as i was talking some time back uh, real time back uh, what you are interested is a framework where you can actually incorporate a discrete measurement equation actually so that leads to to this concept of uh, discrete time kalman filter in other words the system dynamics can be continuous and it is not typically continuous but we can mathematically discretize it whereas uh, uh, sensor outputs are typically discrete and we can't make it uh, continuous i mean the the tape it may not be feasible because the sampling rate may not be sufficiently fast to to interpret it that way actually yeah. so let us go and see how we can derive everything in the form of discrete time yeah. and here it doesn't make sense to talk too much on time invariant or time varying and things like that both will converge to the same thing so in general we talk about time varying uh, system linear systems and discrete time domain so we have this uh, system dynamics where uh, xk plus 1 is given something like this and yk is something like this okay k it stands for time step actually okay and here uh, this wk and vk are again assumed to be zero mean white uh, uncorrelated gaussian and uh, and white noise actually okay. so what you are telling here is again the similar concept but in the form of uh, kronecker delta this time okay. and uh, this uh, direct delta and kronecker delta have kind of similar properties but they are uh, i mean th this operates on the discrete domain the other one operates in the continuous domain actually so that uh, the kronecker delta kj is defined as something like this if k is not equal to j it is zero it is k is equal to j it is it's one actually okay so when you take expected value of wk times wz transpose there is some value okay which is the uh, qk provided j is equal to k otherwise it's zero similarly expected value of vk times vz transpose is uh, is rk provided j is equal to k otherwise it's zero basically 
and because of orthogonality and things like that uh, they are uh, uncorrelated and thing so that means uh, expected value of ek times wk transpose it turns out to be zero basically so there are two ways of looking at it uh, and the first way is uh, very popular and uh, logically so uh, one thing i mean this form tells okay i will uh, propose it this way that means there is a predictor uh, equation and there is a correction equation corrector equation okay and if you can uh, substitute this equation two in one you can always get this form which looks very close to what you have done in continuous time actually okay all right so this is actually observer form or a recursive form as they call okay and but this form turns out to be much more uh, intuitive and easy to implement and logically it makes a lot of sense also basically here you see okay what's the difference here here you see all minus here minus here minus here and here you see some uh, some superscript being minus sometime plus sometimes like that and the implication is also i mean there okay okay Okay, let me go to that implication first and come back to here actually probably so this uh, this is discrete time form so the implication uh, i was talking about uh, implication of this so what it turns out this prediction uh, you think about something like uh, starting at uh, some sort of a plus value and going to this minus value using this correct i mean prediction sort of thing and starting with a minus value you go to the correction corrected value plus value using this measurement equation with this remember yk is a measurement uh, value basically okay. so what it means is something like okay i, sh I have this uh, pictorial representation of something like this you have you if you see this time domain okay which is uh, some k starts from okay this is k this this is k plus 1 let's say this is k plus 2 so something like this and what happens is i have some value okay i will predict okay so let's say this is xk plus i will i will predict and i will end up with xk plus 1 minus then i update this and then i will, once i update i this value will change to some other value and that value i will call as xk plus 1 plus then i will predict again and then i will end up with something like xk plus 2 minus and here again there is a measurement measurement can be either way positive or negative it doesn't matter Finally, it will get x k plus two plus. Okay, so this way it will continue. So in other words, there is prediction. Okay, I I know some value. There is prediction, correction, prediction, correction like that actually. Okay. All right. So starting with uh, the updated value, I can go for a predicted value, then update it again and things like that. That's that's why it is very logical actually, and it also. Uh, make is convenient for computer programming as well okay. all right so that is uh, this what is written here prediction correction form is is more popular and is uh, logical more structured and easy to implement as well okay it also leads to the logical extension uh, extension into this this ek for extended kalman filter when you see it actually this is the form that is that is most uh, widely used and that is in ek to mean actually prediction and then correction okay and also it gives us a platform so okay just if you see this form it gives us a platform that uh, during prediction we don't really have to use this this discretized equation you can use uh, another discretized equation if you really want to with higher accuracy actually okay. even even though the theory theory assumes that okay we do it one step one step all the thing if you can in, in, in the prediction stage someone can think about implementing in the some sort of higher order numerical integration scheme that also gives a platform to to implement that way anyway so this is what it is so now the question is uh, how do we make sure that estimation is correct our estimation is good actually in other words error of estimation is small so that's what our objective all the time so when you talk about error now error is in uh, in force domain so first of all you have you had something like okay if you see this picture as well there was some value okay from which it was updated Okay, so this is x k minus basically. All right, so this is. Uh, I mean, if you see this this picture, turns out that okay, k. If I talk about uh, time step t k or k, I have a value for x k minus and x k plus. 
Similarly, at k plus 1, I have a value for x k plus 1 minus and x k plus 1 plus. So, essentially if I look at this k and k plus 1, I essentially observe that there can be 4 errors actually. Error can come out, come in here, error can come in there, error can come in here or error can come in there. So, then I have to define 4 error quantities ok and first error quantity is x k tilde minus which is x k minus x at uh, x k hat minus and similarly x tilde k plus which is x k minus x k hat plus. Similarly, you can define that at time step k plus 1 ok. Now, you define what is this uh, this error covariance matrix and this this error covariance matrix turns out to be something depending on these quantities we have to define the corresponding quantities. That means, if I start with this quantity then error covariance matrix p k minus p k minus turns out to be expected value of ok k, this quantity okay, whatever I have here x k tilde minus x k tilde minus transpose ok same, same quantity. Similarly, if this if I tell p k plus then I have to take this quantity times this same quantity transpose that is what is written here. Similarly, things are here ok and uh, do not get confused too much with the math is all about uh, good bookkeeping actually ok. So, essentially what you are telling is uh, we want to derive these expressions ok and finally, select this Kalman gain in, in such a way remember it comes here in the in the correction equation actually ok. In, uh, I want to derive this k e k in such a way that ultimately when I update my p k plus will turn out to be minimum that is the whole idea there actually ok. Because when I update ok I want to see a good update value updated value should be very good that means this quantity this p k plus has to be minimum actually and similarly p k 1 plus also needs to be minimum things like that actually ok. All right, to, to have these quantities different different quantities, we need to analyze uh, this quantity first because this is coming here and this one is related to each of the term here is related to the system dynamics ok. So, we analyze this quantity ok error is nothing but true value minus the estimated value at k plus 1. So, true value is system dynamics it comes from something like this estimated value is something like this from the equation I mean from the predictor corrector equation ok this quantity is available put it back here. So, once you put it back uh, this uh, k can be common. So, you have this x k minus x k hat plus nothing but x k tilde plus okay, this quantity and then b u k and b u k will get uh, cancelled out okay, this quantity gets cancelled out actually. So, we combine this first term with first term and, and leave the other one actually then g k w k will turn out to be like this. So, this expression is available now. So, what about this? Because this expression is, is now available. So, we can always talk about this quantity which is expected value of this quantity times the same quantity transpose. So, now we have got an expression for that quantity plus the same quantity transpose ok. So, what you do now is, uh, is expand this transpose and then multiply this uh, this matrix these two matrices. So, we get uh, 4 terms actually. So, if you do this algebra carefully it will learn, learn up with something like this and again excite this uh, fact that uh, expected value is a linear operator. So, we can separate it out all the things, but here we can observe that this there is a multiplication of w k and x k tilde plus. Similarly, is x k tilde plus and w k again. So, that means, these are uh, not correlated. So, essentially this these two quantities will go to 0 ok. So, we are left out with this one and that one. This one turns out to be nothing but uh, this by definition and this one what we have here is nothing but q k again by definition actually. So, essentially this p k plus 1 minus ok which is essentially an estimate of how much the error it is after prediction ok turns out to be like this. Okay. And we have to obviously start with this because this is remember this is kind of a propagation equation. So, we need some some sort of p naught minus value and it comes from there actually ok. Now, expression for p k plus then what is what is p k plus uh, essentially expected value of this times 
this times that same quantity transpose. So, we, we, are, we have to have some, uh, some idea about this quantity. So, this is again by definition you, you go back to the definition and put here something like this x k is x k we return it like that, but x k plus is uh, this quantity ok. We have this x k plus is update quantity or correction corrector equation put it back there ok. And now, we expand all this ok x k plus and now y k is nothing but c k x k plus v k. So, we put it y k expression here and then expand all that ok and it turns out that uh, we can write it, it in this form actually ok. Ok, because now here is x k, here is x k head. So, when you take out talk about this quantity, this is nothing but that by definition the, the error between these two. So, error after update is a function of error before update which is very logical actually and then and this v k quantity also ok. So, all right. So, this is the type of thing. Uh, so, that means, uh, once you have uh, I mean what you have now is x k tilde plus which is which is something like this. So, what is our aim? Our aim is to analyze this quantity p k plus which is given as something like x k plus times x tilde k x k tilde plus transpose. So, this this quantity is something like this that is what we derive now and hence we put it back here this quantity plus the same quantity transpose again and uh, we carry out the standard algebra ok and see. I mean again I suggest that you take a sheet of pen and paper and try to derive it yourself then only you can see what is going on here very clearly. Then ultimately it turns out that ok we have this uh, this v k x tilde and things like that that we that is not there. So, that will go to 0. So, we will end up with this quantity which is same similar quantity. So, that is nothing but p k minus. So, this term will be retained this will go to 0, this will go to 0 and this term will be retained in the form of this ok. So, we got expression for error covariance matrix update actually. So, now what is our aim? Aim is to have this quantity as small as possible ok. So, after update at a particular time instant I want that estimation to be good that means, the error between estimated value and true value should be as small as possible and this is a indicator of that. So, that means, uh, whatever p k plus expression is there I want to minimize that actually ok. So, essentially the problem is uh, like this we want to select a k e k in such a uh, in such a manner that trace of this p k plus is minimized. Okay. In other words minimize j is a performance index half of trace of p k p k plus with a proper selection of k e k. So, obviously, we have to accept this necessary condition that del j by del k e k equal to 0. So, that del j by del k e k if you just see th this expression turns out to be like this because j is nothing but trace of p k plus and p k plus is available here ok. So, st using standard mat matrix algebra calculus uh, I mean calculus for matrix um, expressions we can derive something like this this del j by del k e k turns out to be like this and here is a is actually a linear uh, equation in terms of k and fortunately k happens to be in the in the left hand side in both the expressions. So, it is easy to solve. So, you take i k in the left hand side take this and then that uh, this p k minus times e k transpose which happens with a minus sign goes to the right hand side appears here and then k e k is ultimately something like remember this is a right side product. So, we have to multiply with right side inverse actually essentially what it means is k e k is p k minus times c k transpose which is this quantity plus this this matrix inverse actually ok. So, what you are having here? We got an expression for p p k e k alright. Now, p k minus k I mean p k plus we got an expression for that also ok. Now, p k because see remember uh, we need a expression for for update of uh, this uh, this covariance matrix as well. So, we got that and then we got an expression for Kármán gain also basically. So, we are kind of done. There is a small interesting observation here that if we, if we use this expression again and revisit this expression ok, then we can actually get it a little bit simplified expression 
okay, because you put it back uh, I mean whatever we know here if we put it back then uh, sorry not that okay, what, what I mean is you start with this expression okay, and try to simplify this okay, this transpose goes inside and then try to kind of expand this bracket and things like that. It turns out that uh, these two quantities cancel out okay, these two quantities will get cancelled out and we left out with that. So, uh, it turns out to be a much simplified expression, but unfortunately it is not a very good idea to implement this uh, because it will have numerical problems actually. This is not a symmetric expression. So, in other words uh, you may there is a chance that the symmetricity will be lost because of uh, some other problems like round of errors and all that actually. So, so we, uh, there is a strong recommendation in the literature and books that uh, even though this simplification is possible, never get tempted uh, towards using this. You still use uh, this equation only. All right. Uh, so, what is the summary here? Uh, after all this, uh, we have this uh, state equation okay, in the form of uh, discrete uh, time, but discrete time varying system. And measurement equation is given something like this with the usual assumptions that uh, this W and V are white noise uncorrelated and things like that. We have got uh, we have to initialize the filter and we initialize that way okay, with uh, values for x at not minus and v not minus. Okay. Then we compute this okay, which is all function of minus remember that k e k happens to be a function of all minus k values. Okay. So, we evaluate that, but soon we have to update it actually, okay. but uh, using this k e k we update this uh, the state equation in this form and here is that measurement will, will come and help us actually. So, this is the okay, this is the Kalman gain computation part, then we will use that for, for uh, update and we update both, we update uh, state equation I mean state uh, values and update the now is uh, sorry the the covariance matrix also basically error covariance matrix. So this is uh, this is initialization. This is gain computation at every step, and then uh, then this is update equation. We update the states like this, and we update the covariance matrix also like this. And again, this is this expression is preferable. This is not preferable. Okay. Then we have this propagation after that. Okay, the propagation turns out to be like this. This is system dynamics. We can we can propagate directly, and remember there is no noise which is taken into account while propagating. You can't have a noise. The noise is something that is unknown actually. So we just propagate with the known part of the system dynamics, okay. and then we have, we propagate this uh, this p matrix also, and p k minus one plus uh, p k plus one minus has been derived also basically. Okay this one using this expression you can we can propagate the p k plus uh, sorry you can get an expression for p k plus 1 minus actually okay. So, this is update then you propagate then again you go back to Kalman gain but you compute that quickly and then update and then propagate like that actually okay. So, that will continue that way. So, this is uh, all about uh, discrete time equation implementation of Kalman filter, but some people can also think uh, okay, we want to implement in a direct way. In other words, we can also go back and, uh, and implement the direct recursive wave form actually and there is no point in giving minus plus and all that there because everything happens at the same time sort of thing. So, minus uh, plus uh, superscript notation is dropped here and you can go back and tell okay, this is my uh, I mean this observer equation where I need a k e k. So, k e k I will compute it that way, where p k will we need a p k, but p k will turn out to be from this propagation we will we will obtain p k. We, we initialize p k, but uh, using this equation we can propagate p k actually. Okay. So, this is a different alternate form, but uh, I, I mean to my knowledge and uh, Many people will also prefer the, the prediction correction form actually. It is very intuitive and easy for programming things like that actually. All right. So, this particular lecture uh, is good enough for uh, understanding this. What we discuss here is continuous time in linear system and uh, revisited all that and then using those derivation ideas we had uh, derived this uh, same things for uh, time varying linear system as well. 
then we went to this uh, this discrete time form and then we had this this uh, derivation of all these equations where we have an idea of how to implement it both in the predictor and correction form as well as this uh, this direct form actually all right so for the next class onwards we'll uh, go back to the the real problem of nonlinear systems and try to see what way we can extend these ideas for this uh, this external kernel filter and beyond actually which is uh, which is what is used in practice actually all right so this one's in this class thank you